not a giant, but it's a good way to start the morning. I am Brent Ayler, and we are out here shooting some vlogs with Tackle Warehouse on Lake Gunnersville. And we are trying to key in on the shad spawn this morning. So I picked up a spinner bait. We're running some points. And we are trying to capitalize on a post-spawn largemouth bite, which usually comes in conjunction with the shad spawn. So good way to key in on some good early morning action. That shad spawn only lasts a little bit. So we're gonna see if we can key on it here this morning. I'm gonna alternate between a, a lipless crankbait, an LV500 by Electricraft, and a Boss spinnerbait. See which one they like the most. When it's real shallow, I'll throw that spinnerbait. When it gets a little bit deeper, that's where I'll throw that LV500. What we're fishing is just a point right here. It has a little bit of good gravel, hard bottom, shell up on top, and then a little bit of grass kind of on the edge and the side. There it goes. Number two this morning on Shad Spawn. This here is an LV500. We have a lot of grass right here, some milfoil. I'm actually getting that on the outside edge and throwing that, trying to cover a bunch of water to find those active fish that are on the Shad Spawn. Not a big one, but a decent start. I think we're gonna catch a few more here. Probably on that cast, we'll see what happens. But a lipless, on a shad spawn around grass is a good choice. A spinner bait is a really good choice. I'm gonna throw a Gunfish 115 here in just a second too, just to see, you know, get it up on top of the grass and have them look at it a little bit more. This, this LV500, it's you know, moving pretty quick. And the thing that I do like about it is I can get it into that milfoil a little bit and snap it free. That's always when you get that bite is you get that reaction bite when you're snapping it through that grass. What's crazy is I'm not seeing any shad anywhere. That's a good one, actually. Boy, it's a real subtle bite. That's interesting. Oh, he just looked big out there. He's little. So what I did is I've been throwing the LV500 and the spinner bait, and the 500 was getting down just a little bit too uh, too deep. It was getting hung up too much in the grass. So I went to an LV100 to keep it up out of the grass a little better. I can throw it in shallower water. I just had a bite, lost it, and then just caught that one. But really weird, not real aggressive bites with not a real aggressive bite, which is funny because I'm winding this LV100 pretty quick. Normally when one bites it, it's a real aggressive bite. The one that I lost and then that one, it was just kind of almost like I, I got a piece of grass on there. It just got kind of mushy and, and the bait stopped vibrating. I almost didn't even know it was a fish. Let me try that top water and see. Just something keeps telling me to throw it. I can keep it up above that grass better. And the bites aren't real aggressive. Maybe they want something moving slower. Conditions look great for a, a gunfish 115 this morning. A little bit of a ripple. Watercolor seems to be okay. Now that, right there, is how you want him to bite it. <laughs> Look at that LV100 right there. That's about as good as they can bite it right there. That fish is never coming off. Not a big one, but 
I pulled it through some grass and I felt the tick and my line went slack. That is when they're getting it. Not a big one. Still trying to chase the shad spawn, which I haven't really seen. But again, change up to that 100. I changed the hooks to Short Shank EWG by Gami. Uh, that one, I didn't need it. Shoot, I probably didn't even have to have a hook. I would have landed that thing. But I'm hopping spots as, kind of as fast as I can with low light this morning. And uh, throwing the 100, I've thrown the top water a little bit. Haven't had a bite on the top water yet. Caught one little one on the spinnerbait. Any good shad imitations. Just trying to mimic that shad and burning it. You know, this, I've been running points. So typically what happens is outside of spawning bays, looking for points, those fish are gonna key on shad before they get out onto the, you know, more of the main lake and uh, get into a summer pattern. They're not quite there yet. Some are getting out, but this is really staging areas where those fish that are moving out, they stop on the you know, points around the bays before they get out a little farther uh, as it progresses into the summer more. So I throw a spinnerbait. I don't use a glass rod. Uh, a lot of people, you know, like with a chatterbait, a lot of guys run glass. I, I have to throw it on a glass rod, a uh, rod that I design. But with a spinnerbait, I don't. And, and the reason for that is anytime I get around shallow cover that I'm throwing a spinnerbait, I, I like a graphite rod instead. And so I use my Tattoo Elite 7.3 medium heavy rod multi-purpose. The multi-purpose rod is a rod that I use for so many different things. Uh, it's great for a spinnerbait. So 7.3, medium heavy action, great all around rod. Throw it on a Tatula 100 reel. Uh, it's just, it's my standard workhorse. That's why you use for everything pretty much. So 6.3 uh, gear ratio, 20 pound Sunline Sniper. Uh, the spinnerbait I typically throw is a Boss. Uh, Boss spinnerbait. This is one that I actually designed, or I made up. Uh, I bought the raw heads and then made the skirt, made the blade combination. I wanted both silver uh, willows and smaller because I wanted to burn it a little bit. So uh, it's just a great kind of blade combination. Just a, a double willow is such a standard spinnerbait, uh, but that's the Boss head. Very fishy looking, has some real you know, realistic eyes on it. A great hook and a great skirt. Uh, that's standard spinnerbait. You know, I'm not an expert at, at, at throwing a spinnerbait. I catch very few on it, but sometimes it's it's very crucial to my day uh, to catch a couple key fish. And this morning in the shad spawn, I was able to catch one on it. Uh, and that's it. Just a standard shad color. Uh, that's a standard setup for me for throwing spinnerbait. Big one. They're all little. Little. Another one here, just running grassy points in the morning. I have not seen anything that makes me believe that there's a, a strong shad spawn going on. You know, normally you see the shad uh, flicking on the surface, but it could just be hitting the wrong areas. Uh, a lot of times it's, you know, it's not everywhere on the lake. When you collide with it, it can be pretty special, but from what I've seen so far this morning, it hasn't really been anything exciting. And typically when I'm fishing a lot of grass, you, you, know, or, you know, fishing shallow grass. You need a bait that can clear, meaning that when you get hung in the grass, you have to be able to clear it and still be effective. And that, that could be a chatterbait or a spinnerbait, and in this case, a, a Lucky Craft lipless crankbait. And earlier on in the morning, I was throwing an LV500, but the grass or where I felt the fish were was, was a little bit shallower and I was having a hard time fishing the LV500, so 
I changed up to a 100, which is a lighter bait. The 500 is three quarter ounce, the 100 is a 3.8, so it's a lighter bait and you can fish it in shallower grass, shallower water. And, and so that's what I went with. And so when I throw the, the LV100, I like to throw it on my small crankbait rod uh, that I designed for Lucky Craft in the Tattoo Elite Series. And it's a 7.2 medium action glass rod. It's perfect for that little 3 8 ounce uh, lipless, you know, LV100. Uh, th that rod, this rod is actually the rod that I designed for throwing 1.5 and it works perfect for the LV100 as well. And the reel is a Tatula 100. That's just my workhorse. That's the one I use for almost everything. Uh, it's just such a good all around reel. The frame is the right size for me. It's a little bit smaller frame than most of the Tatulas. Uh, everything to me is just, it's just a really good smooth reel. So a uh, line I run anywhere from 14 to 16 pounds Sunline Sniper. Uh, the Sniper is a very soft fluorocarbon. I use it for everything except flipping. And uh, in this case right now, I think I have 14 pound on this. This is just what I had. I normally throw 16 especially if it's real thick grass. But this stuff right here is milfoil and eelgrass, 14 is plenty. And, and the 100, the, the first thing I did when I, when I got this bait out is I put on some Gamagatsu short shank EWG trebles. And that EWG treble works really well in grass because it traps the fish better. And when they bite it, it traps them better and you don't lose them as easily. So I uh, switched out. And, and upgraded the, the hooks, meaning they're a little bit bigger than the stock hooks. That's another reason when you're around the grass, if you have a, a real light you know, wire, even just a round bend gami, a lot of times those fish can ball up in the grass and they get so much leverage that they can bend out uh, the standard you know, round bend gami gatsu hook. So, and that's my setup for the LV100. Nice one on the LV500. Look, he's gaffled, man. That's what that Gami short shank EWG does. It traps them, man. When they get hooked, they are hooked. Nice one. LV500 fishing grass, shallow. Snapping it here and there when I can. You know, when I fish the LV500, I like throwing it on the Tattooly Elite medium heavy 7.4 cranking rod that I designed uh, for Daiwa. And this rod is, it is actually a cranking and bladed jig rod. I actually designed it for throwing a chatterbait. Uh, but it works really well for the LV500. That medium heavy action is enough backbone to where I can snap it free when I get uh, balled up in the grass. Plus, LV500 is heavy bait. It's a three quarter ounce bait. So uh, it's easy to cast, easy to fish. Uh, in this case right now, I have it on the Steve A reel. Um, you know, really I, I would be throwing on a 100, uh, Tatula 100, but this is what I had on this rod. That's what I throw a chatterbait on is, is the Steve's A. Uh, so I have that on, on here right now, but a toss up, the 100 or this, is a great reel to pair up with an LV500. Uh, line, I throw on you know, 16 to 20 pound Sunline Sniper. This is 20 pound. And uh, I like heavy line, especially in grass. Uh, there's less stretch. I can snap it out of the grass better. I never use braid just because it doesn't, I don't like the feel of it. I can usually clear the bait you know, enough uh, with fluorocarbon to still have an effective cast. Uh, the bait itself, LV500 by Lucky Craft. And then the only thing I do differently is, is change out the hooks. Uh, run the Gami, short shank EWGs. Uh, you know, that is, is such a, uh, a good grass hook. 
short shank EWG is really good in the grass. It traps the fish. Anytime you get that extra wide bend that has, you know, it's more of a trapping bait. And, and when you hook the fish, it seems like you land them better. Plus, that short shank EWG is a really stout treble. Uh, you need that a, a, a heavier treble when you're fishing in grass, especially if the grass is thick, because if you catch a big fish, they can ball up in the grass and they get so much leverage with that bait. If they get in and they have that bait in their, their cheek or their corner of their mouth and they get balled in the grass, it's so easy for them to just yank their head to the side and straighten out those trebles. So a heavier treble is a must when you're fishing around grass uh, with an LV500 like this. So that's my basic setup for an LV500. There's one. All right, another one fishing shallow with the LV100. You know, I, I'm not excited with how the morning has gone. Um, you know, I'd really like to get out and fish some ledges. I ran the stuff in the morning looking for shad spawn. I uh, never really got onto anything special that I was excited about. You know, the fish weren't very big, nothing was really loaded up. I didn't see the shad actively spawning and flicking on the surface. So the thing that's tricky about the shad spawn is that it doesn't happen everywhere. It's not like you can go and just instantly catch them. You kind of have to land on them. Uh, having not been here for years and not knowing the key areas, I ran into a few fish, but nothing that excites me. So I'm thinking now it's about eight o'clock, this should be tapering off. I haven't even caught them, I was out at the prime hours. I wanna go out and look for some more schools deep and see if I can get on a school and catch some of those, you know, five, six, eight pounders that live in Lake Gunnersville. So I think we're gonna go and do that now. Thanks for tuning in this week here at Lake Gunnersville for the Vlog or Tackle Warehouse. Be sure to like, share, tag a friend, and we will be back next week for more action at Lake Gunnersville.